All right. We are going to come up with the answer to some of your questions that you guys had earlier uh, in the week about what makes something living versus what makes something non-living. So we're going to be looking at classifying things as either in that living group or that non-living group. So if you ask yourself, is it living, we have to make sure we think about what qualities or what characteristics do all living things have to have. So some of you guys mentioned that they have to have water or they have to have oxygen or carbon dioxide, so that exchange in gas. They have to be able to grow and they have to have nutrients. A lot of you guys came up with those kind of things that help you identify if something's living or not. But we also have to think about some of the other characteristics, which means having does it have cells? Um, last year you guys learned in science that tissues are made up of like your tissue as in like your skin is made up of little tiny tiny building blocks called cells and that everything that is living has cells in it. Another characteristic is responding to the environment or responding to stimuli. If you turn on a light you'll notice the bugs scatter away. That's responding to the stimuli. So all living things respond to some kind of stimuli or something in the environment. They also have to be able to reproduce and they have to be able to eliminate waste. So those are the, eight, the characteristics of life. There's eight of them. So when we th start taking a look at something, we have to think about those eight characteristics of life. So let's say you go ahead and you take a look at your yard. Earlier this year, we had a lot of yards that were really, really brown in color. And so some students might say, oh, the grass is dead. It's not living. But that's not the case. If you think about it, w when there's no rain, the grass turns brown. But once it starts raining, the grass turns green again. So it's responding to stimuli. This idea that the grass goes brown means that it goes dormant. It's living, but it's in an inactive state. And so in this case, it has all the characteristics of life. It has cells, it needs water, nutrients, can reproduce, responds to stimuli. It has all of those eight characteristics. The only thing that's different is that sometimes it's inactive because it doesn't have all the, char the, all the characteristics. It doesn't have water. So it turns brown. It goes in that resting state. So if something is in dormant state, it still is considered in the living category. So let's think about this. I am not a person that has a green thumb. A lot of my plants end up dying and looking like this. The difference is if you, plant, if you don't water the plant over an extended period of time, way past the point of if you water it, still nothing happens, you know that the item is dead. But the thing is, it was once living. It had all the eight characteristics of life. Even though it's dead, it was once a living thing. And that means that it fits in that living category. Anything that had all eight characteristics at one point in time means that it's a living thing. It's in the living category. So even if an item is dead, it still fits in that category because it once, at one time, had all eight characteristics of life. So think about this. We have ears of corn. The corn grows from a kernel or a seed. So it was tar started as a seed, planted in the ground, and grew into what we see there. So we have kernels that, uh, that co the corn produces an ear of corn, or ear of kernels. And if you go ahead and you take those, con those, those kernels, and you go ahead and plant them in the ground, you can go ahead and get a plant. So even the ears of corn, after they're picked, they're really seeds. And those seeds, if they're in the right condition, will grow up and, and grow up into a, a plant. So seeds are in those living category. Again, it might seem like the seeds are inactive or in that dormant state, but really if they have the right conditions, they'll go ahead and start going ahead and growing. They'll start going ahead and reproducing. And so it's really one of those things where I want to make sure we understand if it has all eight characteristics of life, it's going to be considered the living category. It just might be at a resting state or an inactive state for a period of time. So really, we have to think about what's the difference between the living and the non-living category? Anything that fits in the living category has to have all the eight characteristics of life. Even things that are dormant or inactive 
or things that are dead still fit in that category because they had all eight, eight characteristics of life. Things that are in the non-living category are things that have never or will never have all eight characteristics of life. So those eight characteristics of life are really important. We need to know those eight characteristics of life. And so that's something that's going to be really important for us to make sure that we refresh our memory and that we know those. Those are things we're going to have to actually memorize. So let's go ahead and take a look at some practice. These were things that were on our, our little activity that we did in class. We have the sun, we have tornadoes, we have fire, we have mushrooms, we have bananas. Those are just some of the things that we had on our list. I want you guys to go ahead and practice. Determine if these things are in the living category or the non-living category. Remember, things that are in the living category, they have all eight characteristics of life or have had or will have the eight characteristics of life at one time. So take a look, try to practice and see what you guys think for those, those uh, objects that I have on the page. Bring back those answers to class and we'll go ahead and check to see how you're doing.